Okay, this is the last video, and hopefully this one is going to be fairly short. I think we're almost done. Now, I have finished the R in the same row or column and, and R adjacent, the two things that, that are your homework. Each one is just a three or four line uh, function or method. And I've folded it up so if I, you know, if you hit the little plus minus sign here, that folds up the code so that uh, I don't want to give you those three lines of code. I would like you know, something for you to think about and, and try to do, but I want to demonstrate and for you to see what the thing is going to do. So I'm just going to finish the last part up. Add location. Int x <coughs> equals l dot x. Int, <coughs> int y equals l dot y. <clears throat> so I want to mark, if we're adding a location to the grid, I just want to mark this as, as taken. So I want to say the maze sub x, y equals true. That is now a passageway. And if I make it a passageway, I want to take any adjacent, well, uh, not any. I want to take the ad ad available adjacent locations that are above, below, left, and right and add them to the list of possible locations. So if where's my, where's my method? Is available, I think. Is available. If is available, x minus 1, y, the thing to the left, then possible locations <coughs> add new location <coughs> x minus 1, y. <coughs> That's to the left. To the right would be x plus 1, y. <coughs> Above would be x, y minus 1, and below would be x, y plus 1. And I think I'm done. I think. I hope. Oh, wait. Back in my paint thing, when I was testing, I changed this to true. And I want to say, if the maze sub row call. Okay. And, I, and I'm just going to leave it like that because this is holding Booleans. That's either true or false. It's true if it's a passageway. It's false if it's not. So if it's a passageway, make it white. What is it going to do? Will it work? Will it work? The suspense is killing me. Uh-oh. It didn't work. All right. Let me pause the video. I don't want you to sit here for a long time while I debug. I'm going to find the problem. Okay, so I found two mistakes so far. And I think it's useful for you to see how I'm finding my mistakes. And um, the first one I just looked, and I had pluses here and here. Um, if you rewind the video, you may find that I had pluses there and there. I copied and pasted them. I thought I'd changed them, but apparently I didn't. And then I went and said that you got to check and be extra careful there, all right? And then I, and then I wasn't. The next thing I had, as I said, if this is equal to 1, return true. I should have less than or equal to 1 because the very first uh, passage is going to have 0. And if this thing, if it's not 0, 1, or 2, it would say return false, don't add it, and, and then it quits never having added any passages. And so, so you really have to make that less than or equal to 1. Every, every passage after that is going to have at least one, the adjacent one that, that was there that, that got it added down there as a possible location. But, um, but for that first initiation, that needs to be a less than or equal to one. And now I have another problem. So, so the way that I 
have discovered what was going wrong is I added, uh, uh, I, what I'd like to know is, you know, is it going through this loop? And if it is, what's the size of my possible locations? And when I did it before, it, it was one, and then it immediately went to zero. So I knew it was never actually um, returning true here in this method. So I knew I had to check um, locations, or it was never not adding it there. Um, so if I have a system dot out dot print line possible locations dot size. Okay, so that was printing one and then a zero and then it quit. And now when I run it. It's just growing infinitely, really, really fast. So it's it's adding a lot of locations to this possible locations array that it really shouldn't. So why is that? Um, hmm. X minus one y, x minus one y, x plus one y, x plus one y. X y minus one, x y minus one. Y plus one, so it's the four neighbors. Um, <clears throat> so if it's not already in the maze, so it's available. So I only want to add neighbors that are available. I want to add all the vertical and horizontal that are available as possible locations. I'll make sure that up here I am removing them from the array. All right, I've generate maze. I do remove it. And if check location, so this must be returning true more than I would like it to do to now. X minus one, Y minus one, X, Y minus one, X plus one, Y minus one, X minus one, Y plus one, X, Y plus one, X plus one, Y plus one, X plus one, Y, X plus one, Y, X minus one, Y, X minus one, Y. So I've got all eight of the neighbors. If it is available, if it's not available, then it is then it is taken. If taken dot size is less than or equal to one. Return true. If taken dot size is equal exactly equal to two and they are adjacent. Return true. If the taken dot size is equal to three and they are in the same row or column, then return true. Otherwise, return false. Okay, so that took me nearly an hour, and my wife is going to be really upset because I'm uh, at work so late tonight, uh, and she's been at home with the kids, so I'm in trouble. But, um, so I had Y and X swapped here. I, I chose to do my r maze, row and then column, which is a common thing to do. But if it's row first, then the Y value tells you what row you're in, and the X value tells you what column you're in, and I had it swapped. Because I'm so used to, when I write methods, doing X first and then Y, which is also a very common thing to do. It can be very confusing and you have to be very, very careful. And if something is wrong, uh, the whole thing kind of goes kaput. 
Um, how did I find my mistake? All right. So I have added to the location class a method called toString. toString is a special method. So it's public string toString, and it returns a string. And in this case, because it's got an X and a Y, it's appropriate to have an open round bracket plus the X value, plus a comma, plus the Y value, plus a closed round bracket. And this can convert a location to a string. Once you have a toString method, then in the maze, you can add some print statements right here. Um, OK, I don't want to show you that whole method. Um, but if I'm checking to see if they're in the same row or column, system.out.println, first, second, third. And you can probably pause your video and see the solution. Oh, well, your homework might be easy. Um, but then again, maybe just typing this in and debugging it could be hard enough. Um, so if you can system.out.println the three different um, locations, they'll come out on the console something like this. And where you see just one location, that's where I was printing just one location, or I could print two locations, whatever. Printing the locations. The other thing that, that was helpful was to just slow the program down. I mean, it, it got up to the, where there was 30,000 um, locations in that array really fast. So to slow it down, you can go into this generate maze thing and just say something like thread.sleep. And then say, oh, I don't know, 500. And then it wants you to act, surround it with a try-catch. So go ahead and do that. And then if you run the thing, it's going to run real, real slow. And what you can do is then stop it. And then scroll back up. And then on pencil and paper is the way I did it. I said, all right, it started with 1-1. One, one. It's definitely added some stuff. Oh, I'm, I'm printing the size of the possible locations here every time through. And so it must have added that to the maze. So I put on my uh, piece of paper a check. Oh, it must be uh, that, that it's added that as a passage. And then it goes to 0-1. And this is returning false and decreasing the number of things in the stack. So it did not add that to the maze. Um, oh, and, and the, I put question marks everywhere above and below to the left and to the right of the thing that it just added, because those would be the four things that it added to the maze. And now I can eliminate one of the question marks by putting an X through it. And then I say, all right, it's going to pull one, two out. So that's row 1. This is row 0. Row 1, column 2. No. Column. This is column 1. Column 0, column 1, column 2. So this one got added to the maze. And just by hand, I was able to trace through what it was doing. And then I got to a point where um, there was something that it was pulling out as a location and printing out a location that I didn't have marked as a question mark. And I thought, oh, I'm adding in something that I shouldn't. And then I realized that the one just diagonal from it, right? If it was in row one, column two, row one, column two, shouldn't have had that one because there was no question mark. But there was a question mark in row two, column one. So I thought, hmm, maybe things are flip-flopped. I came down here, and sure enough, they were. So I guess the moral of the story is, is you know, sometimes you've got to slow the program down and then add print statements wherever you can, uh, these print statements, and then seeing what looks, which you can see on the out, uh, console, output console will, will help you out immensely. Um, so if you can get this thing to just compile, run, compile and run, run like this, all right, so when you run it, should look like this. You click on generate a maze. Whoops. It's going too slow. I'm going to stop it. Take out my sleep. Uh, 
generate maze, take out my thread sleep, try it again. Generate the maze, I get a maze. That's great, it's amazing. I can generate another maze. There are 20 rows by 20 columns. If I want to make it a lot more columns, I can. If I can want to make it a lot less rows, I can. Hey, look, a barcode. Um, H's, Y, N. Well, it looks like letters if it's a real low resolution. And then uh, a little higher resolution is some interesting mazes. And if I got the highest resolution, I got a really complicated maze. I dare you to try to find your way from one quarter to the next. Um, print it out. Put it on pencil and paper. No, don't do that. It's a waste of time to try. Well, all right, maybe not. If you're really bored in math class, then try to do that. But um, anyway, um, I really, really hope you get this done. I'm going to give you a little extra time on this one. It is a uh, tough programming project. Um, I don't expect you to understand absolutely everything, but just as you um, watch the videos and listen to what I say and, and type it in and, and, and spend all the time to debug it and get it to work, gradually over time, you will, it will um, soak in and you will absorb it. And programming is, is truly amazing. Um, I hope, I really hope that you don't feel like that it's a bunch of trivial little games and, and um, things that aren't applicable to the real world. So one thing I would like to address, you know, I have worked at um, Berkeley National Labs in, in California. And one of the projects that I worked on was writing a data visualization program for um, for a researcher who was studying dyslexia. And, and the idea was to get a s kids with and without dyslexia to read a passage of text on the screen. And the computer could track their eye movements. And it would collect lots and lots and lots of data. And then my tool would allow t them to visualize that data. And then other computer scientists were able to use a, a technique called machine learning to create a classifier that could then take a child where you don't know if they have dyslexia or not. They read a passage of text on the screen, you feed it into their classifier that they've created with machine learning, and it would tell you whether or not the, the child had dyslexia. Currently, to diagnose dyslexia is very expensive and time consuming. And the hope, the goal, is to reduce the cost of diagnosing and, and increase the re reliability, increase the ability to diagnose things at, at an earlier age, at an earlier state, so that they can do interventions. There are a lot of other applications, really practical applications of computer programming. And I mean, there are just millions out there. I can't even dream of all of them. Um, but they all use the same techniques that you're learning right here in my class. I have no idea what you will eventually learn to do with these skills. It's just, it just blows the mind, all the crazy things that technology can do. And, and it's not the things that are already out there, but it's the things that haven't been invented yet that are just the things that you will invent that are so amazingly cool. So, um, so please, uh, try to have some fun. Study it the best of your ability. Bend your mind. You can do it. Um, stick with it, and uh, good luck. And if you have any questions or problems, please send me a message in Canvas. I'm here to help you. Thanks. Bye.